going? I'm gonna move the truck for the container guy. Listen guys, um, today we're doing a roof. We're in Demarest, New Jersey. I'm gonna tell you the story about it. You're gonna be very, very surprised. But don't forget to like and subscribe. But tell me the story. Keep watching. Hey guys, welcome to another remodel. We are in another remodel. Keep watching, keep watching. Yeah. Yeah. So the story behind this is I did a roof inspection on this brand new home. So a client was, the buyer was gonna buy this home. He said, Junior, do me a roof inspection. But I was referred by Sarah Holmes, hashtag Sarah Holmes. Um, and she said to the buyer, which was her client, listen, get a, a roof inspection, make sure that roof is good. Uh, the roof was not good. There was a lot of problems and issues to them. We send them a quote, we send them the inspection. And then fast forward, uh, I think we're like four months in here. He wants to do the roof now. So uh, he says, Junior, let's get this roof done. So today is the day that we're gonna replace two skylights that are bad and repair, repair a lot of different areas in this roof and then give them a whole GAF complete system. And for the people that don't know what a GAF complete system, go to GAF, look down here, go to GAF.com and they will show you everything about a full complete system for roofing. What do we have here? Fred, ¿qué estamos comiendo esta mañana? Es una comida típica guatemalteca, ¿verdad? That's not French toast, papi. That's a, what is that? What is it, Fred? French toast. That's not French toast. <laughs> That's tortilla. <laughs> so, guys, listen. This is what we're going to do, right? She has a lot of plants. She has a lot of plants in the front and in the back. So, I don't want you to destroy the plants. Also, I want you, when you tarp this, tarp it really good. Okay. Because it's white siding. It's not just like any other color siding. It's, it's going to get dirty. Okay. All right? So we definitely have a small problem, right? And when we come to job sites, we like to assess things because the container guy comes in, and when the container guy comes in and drops the container, there's actually space, right? But in this, in this space management, we don't because we have an electrical pole right here, and it's anchored on the side, and that's the neighbor's driveway. So we got to kind of configure how he's going to be able to drive, drive up here without hitting the pole and try to bring in this container because he can't do it here. There's not that much space. So I have to stay here and kind of guide him in so one, he doesn't hit this pole and we have major, major outage. And then, <laughs> then it'll be a real construction job. You mean a real out of business? It won't be an out of business. <laughs> I'll wait, go. <laughs> so what? Wait. What will happen if, let's say, if that happens? What would happen? So to something the like. <clears throat> so let's say hypothetically, the container guy hits that, right? And that falls. And that There's falls. There's no energy in the whole town because. There's no. They're gonna hate us. They're definitely gonna hate us. They're probably gonna tweet at us, and they say hashtag carpenters touch took away our electrical, right? Uh, but thank God for insurance. The insurance will cover that, right? but people in the neighborhood would hate us because there's no electricity or there's no wi-fi <laughs> so we have to listen uh, and i was just telling freddie is um when you start a roof in someone's house kind of have to assess everything right some places you have a uh, finished patio right new cambridge pa pavers you have to cover them up right sometimes there, there's a truck brand new deck or there's an existing deck you want to cover it right you don't want to bring more damage to a construction site you want to protect what they have so we have to run to a home improvement center home depot and buy plywood to cover that deck and then throw the tarps over so let me go to home depot guys so the realities of, of what happens behind closed doors is that i have an appointment at 8 30 we're starting the roof and we still have to cover the back of that deck. So I have to kind of postpone that and push it over that appointment 
for another roof estimate and then run to Home Depot real quick, come back here with 10 sheets of plywood and then to cover the back of the deck. So follow me there. So I have a question for you, Junior. Um, let's say, what is the, the morning routine for the guy? Let's say Rocky, let's say Rocky. Rocky. Leola. Mm. Hi. <laughs> Let's say what they do, like they go to the office. So, so, so Rocky, since Rocky is a supervisor, his, uh, his job role is totally different. We definitely have a garage at a different location uh, where a lot of things are kept there and stored and tools and some materials and stuff. So Ro Rocky gets there faithfully there at 6.30 every morning. Sometimes he comes in there earlier than 6.30. He stages himself gets what he needs to get. He already knows what's gonna happen the day, the day before. So if it's a roof, he's putting in items in, in the truck and packing that truck up with things that we may need. Like we may need extra plywood. In this case, we're not, we're, right? We're, we're running Home Depot. Um, he may put in extra plywood in the truck. He may put uh, roofing nails. He put uh, plywood nails uh, and extra tarps, right? So he sets himself and then he's on his way. Remember, he is- He's on his way where? He's first on, location? First location, which will probably be the roofing job. If we're running a siding job, simultaneously another siding job, uh, the crews will let us know we need this item or this item. Rocky already knows what he has to pick up the day before. So he's going to the supply house and getting ready to pick up those items to bring it to the job site. So, you know, so where does, wait, when that happens, where he goes first, the siding job or the roofing job? It, it all depends which is much more important. I always say the roofing job has to be done to get there first. The guys that are doing the siding and need extra items, they can wait an hour or two, you know? Why? Dio mio, se va de barata. I think um, when you're starting a job, you always have to start your the job on the right foot, right? Not on the left. And so I always like to have everybody there on the job site so we're all in sync and everything that we need to get so we can start the job can be right. And then we can go to the other job and assist the other crews and assist the other crews and whatever and see. Remember, every single time, I don't care what job it is, uh, every job will have some type of complication, some type of setback, some type of problem. And you always have to come in with a mindset to bring a solution. So um, that's why I get up every single morning. I'm like, all right, let's bring some solutions to the table, right? It's not a problem, it's just bringing solutions. So we already know every single job has it because you'll come to a situation with a roof and it's, you know, we have to change plywood. So we have to address that situation, tell the client, let the client approve of it, and then replace the damaged plywood. Eight hours later. So this is what they call tempered. Is it one eighth inch thick? But well, when the shingles hit this, it's very strong. So it's about fifteen dollars a sheet versus fifty dollars a sheet, and it does the job, right? And uh, you said and you said fifteen dollars, but here it says twenty. Not. No, it's actually here. Oh. Fifteen dollars a sheet versus uh, what a half inch plywood would cost, or a five inch uh, plywood would cost, which would be now thirty to about forty something dollars. Before, remember, we were paying like fifty to sixty dollars a sheet for plywood. Not anymore. The price of lumber has gone up. So if you saw the the videos in the beginning of the year, right? When lumber price went up, it was totally different. The lumber price has gone down. We're back. So guys, we're back. We finally bought um, this thin sheet of plywood, right? It's one eighth. Um, so the guys are tearing everything off. Um, remember the home, the most important thing for this job was to fix all the leaks that they had. Remember, this is a home they just recently bought roughly about th three to four months ago. And we did the roof inspection for them. Fast forward now, they said, you know something, it's time to get the roof done, get it watertight, because we're in July and, and they're thinking about the snow in the winter. So I am gonna um, walk up to the front and just take a look at the roof myself. Come up. So guys, we're here on top of the roof. You know, um, 
thank God that my camera guy is not scared to climb roofs. Remember we're on the slate line roof from GAF when we were in Staten Island? That was a pitch 12, right? He climbed up on me, we strapped him in. This is like a pitch six, pitch five. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely walkable. We still have to be strapped in, guys. Don't, do, don't try this at home, right? So when we walk up to the roof, I always wa want to show people what is a ridge vent because we are, I'm getting a ridge vent installed. This is a ridge vent. <clears throat> it's a slot in between the actual ridge, which is right here. So you want to have a space of one inch to an inch and a half so all the hot air flows out of your roof and then having that air flow in through the soffits and the hot air coming out through the ridge, what? It helps your roof to last longer. Also, when you have that flow, you prevent from mold growing in your attic. So when, when we're walking on top of these roofs, we're as inspecting how many sheets of plywood do we have to replace, right? If the plywood is still sound and good, and do we have to re-nail every single board down? Um, that's what generally we're looking for if there's damaged plywood. That's the first thing that we, we want to look. Also, if there's an existing ridge vent or if there's not an existing ridge vent, to put a ridge vent in there. This is a brand new roof, guys. Take a second, turn around, and if you look, brand new roof there. And if you look on top of the ridge, right where that vent pipe is up there on top, they didn't not they didn't add a ridge vent. Not good. So we have the the roof is broken up in what we call dormers. These two things are dormers. They have a lower dormer here. In other parts of the USA, they call them dog homes or dog houses. We call them dormers. Um, so around the dormers, there's a lot of step flashing. So we're gonna make sure that step lashing is secured. If not, we're gonna add brand new step lashing. So guys, it's roughly about 9, 9, 27. We're trying to get this roof done today. Tomorrow, they're calling about 30, 40% chance of rain. Definitely it's gonna rain on Friday. So we got everybody here on this job to take care of the roof one and done today. Remember, we still have to install two skylights on the lower porch roof area. So run with me to the estimate at Livingston so I can show you how we do estimates.